Lysosomes are another organelle, and these are going to be another membranous sac, but we know that lysosomes, uh, when we talk about lice, right, you guys should automatically be thinking breakdown, right, that lysosomes have these enzymes in order to break down proteins, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, specific molecules um, in order to help the cell function. So the idea that white blood cells Right, their big job is to fight foreign invaders, to engulf and digest bacteria. So the way that they do that is they're going to engulf uh, through endocytosis. They're going to bring them into, into a vesicle, and that vesicle is going to merge with the lysosome, and the lysosome is going to digest the bacteria and kind of help the white blood cell do its job. So obviously white blood cells are going to have quite a few lysosomes in order to play that role out. In addition, white uh, lysosomes are also going to be responsible for destroying worn out cell parts and when the entire cell needs to be destroyed um, because obviously eventually cell parts wear out, they need to be replaced and the old stuff needs to be destroyed, broken down um, and then its parts possibly reused or if not excreted. A specific, very specific organelle that's quite similar to lysosomes are peroxisomes. Um, and peroxisomes, like lysosomes, contain enzymes. However, it contains a very specific type of enzyme, which is peroxidase and catalase. And these two specific enzymes are a really huge role in what the peroxisomes do. And that's because the peroxidase, as the peroxidase breaks down substances, it actually releases hydrogen peroxide as a waste product. Um, hydrogen peroxide is actually toxic to healthy cells, so catalase, its other enzyme, breaks down that hydrogen peroxide to kind of nullify the toxicity. Um, peroxisomes are going to be abundant in liver and kidney cells, and uh, they play huge roles in synthesis of bile, so making bile, um, and they also play a big role in detoxification of alcohol, uh, breakdown of alcohol in the system. So they kind of have a very specified job. Then we have the centrosome, um, which previously in biology we really talked about the centrioles. And really the two centrioles equals the centrosome. So the idea that you have those two centrioles, um, and those two centrioles usually sit at right angles to one another, right? Um, and they, we talked about them kind of looking like churros, like uh, penny pasta, and that they are like Twizzlers. They kind of sit perpendicular to one another, these hollow cylinders. Um, and this is kind of a really good drawing right here, a picture of exactly what the structure um, or formation of the centrosome or of the centriole one in and of itself is. And you can see that there are three little fibers connected by a bond, three little fibers connected, three little fibers. Um, and they are going to be a big part of cellular division because they form those spindles to distribute chromosomes. Um, they also form parts of the cilia and flagella for specific cells. So linking that to cilia and flagella, these are going to be um, little extensions of the cell that kind of help for movement. So motile, we're talking about movement. Um, the cilia are going to be short hair-like projections. So this is going to be our picture of cilia. Um, they're usually obviously large numbers, many of them working together versus flagella. Um, there's usually only one per cell. So example here being sperm, it's that one little tail. Um, and Cilia are going to be a good example in the respiratory tract, uh, the idea that cilia move mucus through the respiratory tract and they catch mucus and that um, ability to kind of coat the respiratory tract in the mucus is what helps the respiratory tract catch bacteria and other things that you breathe in. So long as the cilia are properly functioning and catching everything, when you cough, it should bring everything back up. Um, in class, we talked about the idea of like a smoker's cough, the idea that, that uh, chemicals in cigarettes damage the cilia 
And by damaging the cilia, they kind of uh, do some damage to the ability of bringing things back up. So a person who smokes and coughs, uh, they need to kind of create a pretty extensive force to bring something back up because their cilia are damaged and not properly functioning, if not kind of missing in a way. Then we have microfilaments and microtubules, um, and these are that cytoskeleton that I was talking about before uh, within the cytoplasm. So they're going to be this like structural component of the cytoplasm. Um, and microfilaments are going to be a, made of a specific protein called actin. Um, and they're really going to play a role in cellular movement. So um, for example, muscle contractions. And when we talk about the skeletal system, I'll come back to this and kind of link the idea that these microfilaments within the cell um, are what really make muscle cells able to properly contract, and it's because of this actin that makes up the microfilaments that muscles can do their job. Versus microtubules, which are going to be another protein, which is tubulin, and they kind of help organelles move within the cell, and this is really going to be more about oops, structural support. so that microtubules are going to be a bit more rigid, so they're really going to provide that structure support. And that movement of organelles and is the idea that they provide a track to move along. So it's almost like they're like a pathway for cell organelles to move along within the cytoplasm. This is kind of demonstrating the idea of a microtubule being this long structure here versus our little microfilaments that are going to be in this particular region um, and kind of creating this whole network of uh, proteins that are kind of providing structural support within the cytoplasm. We also have inclusions uh, based on just like the word they're included into what we talk about when we talk about the cytoplasm. They're not really actually an organelle, right? We're really talking about chemicals when we talk about inclusions, but they are technically part of what's going on in the cytoplasm, and that's because they're temporarily in the cytoplasm when they're moving into the cell, when they're moving out of the cell, when they're being transported throughout the cell. These are these different chemicals that are necessary for cellular functioning. So the idea of nutrients, glycogen, lipids, right, specific pigments like melanin, things that are in the cell um, temporarily um, because they're needed, they're being created, they're being used, uh, but we include them, so we call them inclusions when we talk about what's in the cytoplasm.